today's show is just filled with holiday goodness. I'm going to show you how to make wild caught smoked salmon bites, apple mozzarella tomato salad, baked brie that's keto friendly, Belgian endive spear salad, smashed fingerling potatoes, keto cranberry sauce, and a gravy that's going to knock your socks off. So if this is your first time tuning into my channel, welcome, thank you for watching. I just wanted to mention that I am all about cooking like a pro, eating healthy and saving money. And if you like that, tune into this channel more often by hitting that subscribe button and the notification bell, because then you'll know when my videos come out, which are usually once a week. Before I start today's episode, which is all about sauces, sides, and salads, I wanna talk a little bit about the previous video, which was about cooking a turkey like a professional. It's the holidays, you may wanna cook a turkey, you may wanna do it right, you may wanna make it juicy, you may wanna may want make it fantastic. Watch that video, the link is somewhere in one of these corners here, but you definitely need to watch that. This is a compliment to that. It's about the sauces you're gonna use, the gravies, it's about side dishes, it's about salads that you're gonna serve with your main entrees and you're gonna love it. I'm gonna show you how to make a really excellent white gravy that will go exceptionally well with your Thanksgiving or your Christmas turkey. The key to it is to obviously save the drippings from the turkey. I'm gonna show you how to make a very, very simple white wine reduction. And it's just adds such a delicious flavor to your gravy. And basically all you're gonna do is boil down a bottle of wine until it's a little less than a quarter of its original capacity. And you wanna pick a wine that tastes exceptionally well. And if you haven't watched my video about whether or not that makes a difference, the link is there and it's also down below. You should really check that out. You want the wine to come to a boil and then you want it to simmer. Because if you overheat that pot, the wine is gonna burn on the outside. It's gonna radically change the flavor. So once the wine starts to boil, just bring it down to a simmer and wait. You want it to reduce to at least a quarter of its original um, capacity. I feel that this excessive amount of fat on top is really going to take away from the creaminess of the gravy. So I'm just going to skim a little bit off of that. You can use one of those fat separators. They're pretty cool. Now in this cup, I put a half a cup of heavy cream to three tablespoons of arrowroot. Just want to pause a little bit and see how this thickens. It's going to need more. I'm going to put the whole thing. All right, in my opinion, that's done. I'm turning it off. Now let's give it a taste. Oh man, that's fantastic. We're gonna add our white wine reduction to this. And we're gonna add it slowly. This is super concentrated and you don't want this to, to take over the flavor. I'm just gonna put a tablespoon and see how that goes. I'm gonna go with one more tablespoon and that's gonna be enough. This is all about taste. You're gonna to have to do this according to yours. <laughs> so ridiculously good. Watching cranberries boil can't be very interesting, so I'm just gonna give you the recipe. It's really simple. It's just three cups of cranberries to one cup of water to one cup of monk fruit sweetener. Now, if you don't wanna use monk fruit sweetener, that's fine. You could just use sugar. To that, I add one stick of cinnamon and a quarter teaspoon of fresh organic ground ginger. You just wanna bring that to a boil and then lower it to a simmer for about a half an hour to 45 minutes until all of the cranberries pop and the pectin is released out of them. I had this baked brie dish about 10 years ago at a friend's house, my friend Renee, she had made it and it was the best baked brie I've ever had in my life. And since I've had it, I've made it every single year for Christmas. So this is a fantastic appetizer and I highly recommend you serve this during the holidays. Let's call this the top of the brie and this the bottom of the brie. What we wanna do is slice off a little bit of the bottom. So you don't wanna take off the cheese, you just wanna take off that white growth 
that's on the outside of the brie. You turn it a little bit and try to avoid slicing the edges. Then we're gonna take some of our cranberry sauce that we made with the monk fruits extract, so it's keto. Well, I'm sure there's sugar in cranberries, but not a heck of a lot. Ladle that right into the middle of the brie like that. And then you're gonna take your toasted pecans and you're gonna put them on top of the cranberry sauce, but try to crush a little bit. That goes in the oven at 350 for 20 minutes. Then we take these beautiful endive leaves with sliced Bartlett pears and make little scoops for our gorgeous brie. It's unforgettable. I'm gonna cut off about an inch or so off the back of the endive. And you wanna peel the layers. Each one of these is a little scoop. And then when it gets too small, you wanna cut it in half like this. Just put it on this plate like that for now. So in this bowl of water, we wanna squeeze in a good quantity of juice from at least a solid half lemon. Now, sometimes lemons don't have that much juice in them, so you wanna go a little bit more. Half to a full lemon in there. Core our pears. These are Bartlett pears. Put them right in the water with the lemon juice and that'll keep them from turning brown. Basically here, what you wanna do is put a slice of pear with an endive. And then have this out on the table when your guests arrive so they can scoop some of that brie right onto that. It's so fantastic. Start out by taking some Himalayan sea salt and be careful as you coat each endive spear. You have to get a nice amount of Himalayan sea salt on each one, but you don't want it to be too, too much because obviously that'll become too salty, but you still want to make sure there's a nice, generous coating on that. Organic granulated garlic, good, heavy coating, just like that on each one. Oregano, good quality organic oregano. Just a dusting. Make sure that every piece gets a little bit on there. Each piece gets a healthy spritz of lemon. a really excellent, flavorful, first press organic olive oil. This is from Greece. This is actually from a friend's house in Greece. They gave it to me. It's delicious, it's aromatic, it's nutty. Get a really good olive oil for this. And just make sure that every single spear has a drizzle of olive oil on it. You cover this with plastic wrap. Keep it in the refrigerator. Ideally, you want it in there for at least 12 hours, but four hours, six hours, eight hours, it's still gonna be delicious. We're gonna make a cream cheese onion base dip that you can use as a base for this beautiful wild caught salmon appetizer that I'm gonna show you how to make, or you can make the most delicious dip to have with your favorite chips. I'm just gonna puree that so this way I can fit the rest in because I don't wanna go over the max load on this thing. We're gonna add to this two pounds of cream cheese, uh, a little over a third of a cup of freeze-dried chives. We're also gonna add a third of a cup of minced dehydrated onion. The reason why I'm choosing both items to be dehydrated is because I'm looking to extract as much moisture as I can from the cream cheese as it sets overnight. And to that, we're just gonna add a teaspoon of Himalayan sea salt. And also fresh pepper ground. I would say in here we want to put about a half a teaspoon. You want to lay out the salmon in the shape of a rectangle, so like that. Okay, our cream cheese mix, and this has been sitting in the fridge the minced onion, the dehydrated onion, takes a little bit of time for it to soften up. You don't want to serve that when it's like crunchy. Start 
at the middle and work your way towards the edges. Just by one piece, that's okay. That's just love. You wanna cover this with plastic wrap. Never let you down. That's just love. Press down on it so there aren't any air pockets on the salmon, but don't deform the shape. Just keep that in the refrigerator. Overnight is best. This is an optional garnish. Some people don't like capers. I'm just gonna fill this up with hot water. Give it a rinse. Just love. Just a little more hot water in there. I'm gonna let them sit there for a little bit, just to take off that, it's almost like a synthetic-y lemon flavor. Just want that to kind of go away. Maybe about 15, 20 minutes. So we have our capers and most of the flavor that comes in the jar is off of it. Take a microplane, add a touch to it like as if you were salting them, that's how much. Just bring so much brightness and, and completely marries so well with the capers. So you wanna cut a square edge. So I'm just gonna cut, and get a square edge. You're gonna take the cracker that you're gonna use for this. That's gonna give you an idea of where you're gonna cut your salmon. So mark that. Cut right there and do keep going till you hit the end. And hopefully you won't waste any at the end, but believe me, you'll eat it. And you're gonna cut the other side nice square too. So let's go that route. This is where a nice uh, pair of tongs would go over really well. Apples, and they have to be Honeycrisp or Gala apples. You wanna season these with Celtic, uh, with uh, Himalayan sea salt, but you're not gonna put a heck of a lot though, right? You're just gonna put a little bit. So it's really up to your eye here. Basically in this whole thing, maybe I put a half teaspoon at the most. And the seasoning is only three ingredients. A drizzle of balsamic. This whole thing may be a heavy tablespoon. And then a really good quality olive oil. First press, cold press. Mix that up. And the salt and the vinegar is gonna keep the apples from turning brown. So you can make the salad in advance. You know how they say you should do things by eye, like you should measure by eye? Well, you know, you can also measure by taste. So you don't have to figure it out by eye, especially if you're not used to doing it that way. You can add a little bit of salt, mix it up, and then taste it. Plenty of salt. You can add a little at a time, taste it, a little at a time, taste it. That's why you won't mess up. You can do the same exact thing with the vinegar. Add a little bit of vinegar. Mix it up. Taste it. A little bit more. Olive oil, I don't think you really need to taste that. Just coat it nice and generously. Put that in the second bowl. We're gonna cut this into thirds, roughly, depending on where it is in, in the roll. I mean, some parts of the roll are thinner than others. Probably less salt than you think, so go light and then taste it. A little bit of balsamic on that too. Same, same ingredients for the whole thing. And then olive oil. Start to lay out your apples. You can do, I mean, honestly, if you don't really want to do this, you don't have to, but 
just makes it so much nicer. Then our mozzarella in a circle. Make sure there's a little well in the center there. And then our tomatoes last on top. Just like that. This is a tried and true side, especially in the fall when you can get fingerling potatoes readily. Now I've made this dish before on another video and I put the link down below. I don't wanna be redundant and show you the same thing over and over again, but I am gonna do something a little different in this video. I am gonna take these fingerling potatoes, put them in the oven like I normally would, roast them at a 400 degrees convection and when they come out, I'm gonna make a mashed potatoes. So definitely have the option of going either way. You could just serve them as is, but if you mash them oh, with a little heavy cream, they are fantastic. Put them on my parchment paper. And like I said, the recipes for everything here is on my website and you can watch that video to know how I, how I prepare these potatoes. And they simply get put in the oven, 400 degrees convection bake until they're golden brown. Usually takes about half hour. We're gonna take this up one more level and we're gonna smash them up. Now these fingerlings happen to be quite small. If they were bigger, I would probably cut them in half before I smash them. So this way you wouldn't get big chunks of skin. Grab your parchment paper, put everything in the bowl like that. I wanna start out by mashing them first before I start adding any heavy cream to them. The reason why I'm doing this is because I want to see how much liquid the potatoes are going to release, how much butter is in there. So I don't want to make this too soupy. I want it to be kind of thick. Part of the beauty of this dish is that the skin is a little crunchy. It gives it an extra dynamic. So I don't recommend that you mush it up like in a food processor or with a immersion blender. That's pretty dry, so we're gonna add some heavy cream to this. And you're gonna add it slowly. You don't wanna to put too much in there because it'll make it really soupy. I would say maybe a quarter cup at a time. At this point, I'm gonna switch over to a fork. It needs more cream. There we go. How much heavy cream you put in this is entirely up to you. Some people like their mashed potatoes softer. A little more creamy, that's fine. So you have a really nice selection of salads, sides, sauces, and appetizers. Give them all a try, add them to your holiday table. Let me know what you think. Leave a comment down below. And remember, all of the things I cooked today, the recipes are on my website, awarehousechef.com. So check them out. Thank you so much for watching.